everyone, it's Misty here from The Joy of It Elf. Happy Wednesday. I hope you guys are having a fantastic week. If you missed it, I posted a video on Monday sharing with you a kit from Tonic that I'll be using during my holiday card series and some paper that I picked up from um, a cherry on top. And one of those patterns is a fall pattern. So for the next couple of weeks, this week and part of next week, I'm gonna be working on fall and Halloween themed cards. Now I only have four stamp sets in this category. <laughs> so one of the stamps I'm gonna to use today is this cute little kitty and a pumpkin from Whimsy Stamps. It is so adorable. Now I don't always make Halloween cards, like I don't do series. Um, it's just not a holiday that we celebrate. And I don't know a lot of people who send Halloween cards. Although if someone has a Halloween birthday or something, you may want to send it to them in the month of October. But I love Krista. Um, I will see if I can remember to link her down below. But she is one of the illustrators for Whimsy Stamps. And I've been following her for, for years, like probably, probably eight years by now. Um, if you watched any of my um, Saturdays for Soldiers back in the day, um, like her image with the cup and the donut. Um, there's a eggs and bacon that I the color that she did. Um, there was a pail I did. Um, the first one of the first cards in last year's holiday card series with the Santa and the reindeer is her illustration. She used to illustrate for Disney, and her husband still does. Um, her husband worked on Mulan. He worked on a lot of different um, animation films. So I am absolutely in love with her artwork. And for years, I begged her to. <laughs> begged her to get some a way to make stamps and she's working with whimsy stamp company so today we're going to color this cute little pumpkin and this cute little kitty and make a card so let's have oh before i forget don't forget if you miss monday's video i talked about my friend heather and her soaps and um, these are handmade code process soaps she also has body lotion and a couple other things over on her etsy shop you can save 10 percent if you use the code misty 10. i'm not affiliated with heather we're just friends and i'm just trying to help her out during these difficult times so if you're interested in getting some yummy soaps make sure you head over there all that information will be linked down below now let's head over to my craft table and get started Ladies and gentle cars, you are in luck because today you're getting one stamp three ways. So this kitty from Whimsy Stamps is so flippin' adorable and I had three, probably four or five ideas on how to use it. So that's what we are doing today. For card number one, I'm going to be stamping this cute little image with Gina, King, Gina K ink onto... Some hammer mill cardstock, that's what I use for um, Copic coloring, etc. I will be coloring with my Prismacolor pencils today though, so that'll be a little different. So I got this trick from Amy R from Prairie Paper and Ink where I keep a sponge in a glass container and I pour just a little bit of Gamsol on the sponge so I can use my blending stump. Now you do not have to use Gamsol to blend out your colored pencils. You can use just your colored pencils if that's the look that you like. You, you can even use a um, more textured paper if that's the look you like. I suggest watching um, Sandy Alnock. She's really awesome. I mean, she's an artist. She's a professional artist. So, and she shows ways that you can blend your um, Prismacolors or colored pencils without using Gamsol. So I'm just doing um, three or four different colors. It just depends. And I am trying to add, you know, some depth and some shadows, just like I would do with my Copics. I will say I had a much harder time coloring with these colored pencils than I ever had with the Copics. And I'm thinking it's because of the shape and how small they are. Um, so it was a struggle, but we did it. So here I'm just using a blending stump. And again, you can get these off Amazon and it's just paper. It's literally just paper. <laughs> and I am dipping it into the Gamsol and the Gamsol breaks down the wax in the pencils. I think, I think this is how this works. And it allows you to spread the pigment. And I love it. I love how smooth it looks. I love that you can add layers. I love that it's something that's a little bit different than Copics. And not, oh, Nicole Spork is, is that her? 
Oh, dang. Yeah, it used to, yeah, it's Nicole Spork. So <laughs> she also does a lot of coloring with color pencils. So that is actually a card that was a sample with the stamp set. Now the stamp set is um, currently out of stock, but I'm pretty sure they'll bring it back in. And I love the way that whoever, the artist of that card added a bit of like an eyelid with shadow and I'm like I want to do that but I didn't want a black kitty I wanted a gray kitty like Roxy so <laughs> I'm coloring with them some grays now one thing that I did that I don't normally like to do but it actually ended up working out in the end was I added a little bit of a warm gray in with some cool grays and again I really kind of like how it worked out in the end and I really like how these eyes looked in the end I will say that um I didn't leave enough white around the um, pupils, irises, whatever that would be called, to really give a, um, some shading and such, but this was the first time I'd practiced this, and I actually um, used a couple of techniques from taking inspiration from cards that were samples, and that's one thing I encourage you to do. Um, almost all craft companies have design teams, and they have their design teams create for them before their releases go live. And then though they normally share those projects um, on their social media. So you can, you know, you can search by a particular stamp set on Instagram or YouTube, etc. So I encourage you to do that. So after I colored the cute little cat, I moved on to some greens for the leaves and the grass down below. And then I had already stamped a mask. So this is some Eclipse masking paper that I picked up off Amazon. I just cut that out and put it on my um, image. Now, this is just a piece of lamination that I laminated <laughs> with no paper inside of it, just a piece of plastic. And I'm using it to use some distressed inks. And a huge thank you to Amanda. Amanda's a friend. And she reached out to me and asked if I would be interested in her um, the stress inks because she doesn't use them anymore. And I said, please, absolutely, 100%. So this is really my first time using regular distress inks. Now, I didn't want a regular kind of night sky. I didn't want it super dark, you know, where it looks. I wanted this to look more like the sun was setting. And again, I'm not an expert with these, <laughs> with these distress inks. And I'm going to be quite honest and say that I actually like the blends I get with the oxides better, but I know that's just because I have a little bit more practice with them. Not a whole lot more practice, but a little bit of practice with them. So the colors I used were mowed lawn, spice marmalade, I think that's something raspberry, and then seedless preserves. And then I brought in just a little bit of black soot at the very top. And then I'm just going back over it. Now these are the um, brushes I told you I got off Amazon. They're just makeup brushes. So here comes the magic. Da, 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 da. Oh, I forgot I was going to add stars first. <laughs> So I just used my white Signo um, gel pen to add some stars. I could have done the splatter method like I did on the last time I made a nighttime sky, but I decided just to do this instead. So I'm going to lift this up and then we're going to see our cute little image underneath. Now I didn't cut the grass like as close as I could and here I'm like okay I'll just use a little thing but then I thought you know what I'm gonna use my blender pen so this didn't work out so much down here because you can't add a whole lot of water because this isn't watercolor paper but where it worked great is where I was going around the cat you know just where I had a little bit of white showing and that worked wonderfully so what I ended up doing was bringing in a color from Gina K. I actually have no idea what this color to, color is. Maybe something artichoke. But I just went ahead and deepened up underneath um, the grass. The grass would be deeper there anyway because it would be in shadow. Um, and so that, oh, this is where I'm doing that. But um, so yeah, it's like an av avocado artichoke. I don't know, y'all. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm really awful about knowing colors. 
So I have a card base that's four and a quarter by 11 squared at five and a half with a some, it's basic black and then a white card base on the inside, card layer on the inside. Add a, a bit of shimmer to the pumpkin because you knew I would. So I brought in the stamp set from um, Hello Bluebird that I just got for free. And I am using the Zig Black Sparkle Embossing Powder. It's glitter embossing powder and it's black. <laughs> so I went ahead and melted that and then I used the smallest stitched rectangle from Pink and Main to cut that out. And I am adhering this down with some dimensional adhesive from Stampin' Up. So I really, really love how this card turned out. Isn't it so stinking cute? I love it. Okay, so the next card, we're gonna be doing some paper piecing. So one thing that I wanted to make was a fall card because um, I wanted to use this pumpkin. I wanted to be able to show you that you can use this stamp for more than one occasion. So I am looking for a piece of paper that I would want to use to have for a pumpkin. And my thought was this would be a kitty cat, you know, either a real kitty cat on a like a ceramic pumpkin or this is like a pumpkin and cat um, statue. <laughs> Growing up, we had a white cat statue. Um, I was probably three or four. My brother was really, really young. He's three years younger than me, so it had to be when he was one or two. And he would slobber all over that, climb all over it. It was really kind of cute. So what I did is I used my baby wipe to wipe away some of the lines, so especially around the face. Um, what I would probably do next time is just cut out um, a mask or some post-it note or something like that to cover the face and then pull it up. Hindsight's 2020, y'all. <laughs> so I'm stamping this again so I have a place to put the pumpkin once I get it colored. And I am going to add some dimension with some Copics. And here I'm using an archival pen. So this is an um, American Crafts pen, I think. But it's Copic friendly. So this is the inspiration. So this is the, a second card that I'm using for inspiration. The way the artist colored this cat was absolutely amazing. And I don't know if she used Copics or if she used pencils, but it was absolutely amazing. I and I could not replicate it. <laughs> I don't know how she got such small strokes. I mean, I don't I need to go find her blog post and see if she mentioned what she used because it was absolutely amazing. And mine doesn't look a hill of beans like that whatsoever. <laughs> So I'm using a couple of browns to darken up um, the areas of the pumpkins. And then I'm using, um, this is YR000, I believe, to put in where I want the little um, markings for the cat. And then um, I'll show share with you the Copics I'm using in a little bit. I write them all down. So, um, yeah, I mean, I tried. I really, really did try. But this just didn't, it just doesn't. It just doesn't look the same. And that's okay. I think this still turned out cute. But it doesn't look as cute as hers. <laughs> so if you're interested in seeing the inspiration, make sure you head over to Whimsy Stamp. This stamp set is called Kitty and Pumpkin. So it's really super simple to find. And like I said, it's currently out of stock. But they have a place where you can um, sign up to have them email you when it is in stock. So here I was trying to find a color that would be light enough to keep the face lighter um, than the outside of the um, perimeter of the face to have just a little bit of shading. But like I said, this this doesn't look nothing, nothing like her did, hers did. I do like how this turned out, but it's definitely a technique I need to practice. And I don't know if it's because I'm so heavy handed because I have a hard time gripping the Copics, or like I said, I don't know if she, maybe she used um, colored pencils to get that hair look, but holy Moses, is she super talented. So if you're new here, I'm not, a, I'm not an expert colorer at all. I'm, you know, I'm just not. I've been, I've been paper crafting for 10 years now, but coloring is still kind of new to me. 
Um, so I do my best and we don't throw fit. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not here to like give you perfect cards because that's just not who I am as a crafter. I've said for years that I craft in real life. And what I mean by that is you're not here for highly edited, perfect cards. You know, you're here to see someone else who's crafter just like you in real life, make mistakes, start all over, cover things up, those kinds of things. Because we can't expect perfection with every single card. That's just not how it works. And some people, you know, who have those types of cards on their blogs and stuff, they may have worked on it for weeks, you know, or two entire days. We'll never really know. So here I'm bringing in B quadruple zero to add a bit of sky around because I'm going to use a circle to cut this out. Now, out of the three cards, I think this turned out to be my least favorite, but you guys will have to let me know what you think down below. Um, I don't know. I think, I don't know. I think it's because I, when I'm unsure of what I'm doing with a card or if a card isn't going the way I'd hoped, I kind of rely on a couple of kind of sketches, um, layouts that I'm used to using to like to get me to a finished card and while I think like I said I think this turned out okay it's not it's not my favorite of the three and I almost didn't include it in this video but I do I do like how it turned out I just don't love it so that is a scalloped frame die from my favorite things and I cut it out of this paper pack from Echo Park and there you see me I had glued down um, a piece of that gingham on that other paper and then cut it out using a stitched um, rectangle from Pink and Main. And here I'm trying to decide on a piece of paper to be my card base. Um, initially, I thought I wanted a color, but I felt like it was competing with the image. So I went ahead and brought in um, a piece of crumb cake from Stampin' Up. So this is just like a craft. And I'm cutting this down to five and a half by eight and a half. And I squirt it up four and a quarter. And I've put in a white layer on the inside. So I'm going to add this wood, wood grain scallop to my little kitty cat. And I cut this kitty cat out with a stitch circle, which I really didn't need to because it ends up getting covered up anyway. Oh no, there's a helicopter. I hope everybody's all right. We live next door to a hospital that has a helipad. So it's never a good and never a good sign when we hear a helicopter. So I'm just adding some dimensional to the back and then I'm going to get this adhered um, to the left of this paper. Now I love this paper y'all. This is the paper I purchased. I'm pretty sure this is the pad I showed you guys in my haul on Monday. Um, so here, this is why I love this Fiskars trimmer with the wire. So I can cut exactly the way I need to. Now, um, the sentiment ends up being a little crooked, but that's, that's me. <laughs> that's through no fault of the, um, trimmer. That's a hundred percent the fault of me. So I'm adding a little bit of adhesive to where it's going to stick to the cat and then I'm adding double layer of dimension um, where it's going to sit on the card because we've already popped up the cat. So I'm going to add that and then I'm going to bring in one of these, um, well sparkle first because duh, it's misty. But I'm going to bring in one of these um, jewels from Stamping Up that I actually colored with a bronze marker. So there he is. He turned out really cute. I really like how he turned out. So yeah. Okay, so... <laughs> We're paper piecing again. So one of the one of the ideas that popped in my head for this last card was I wanted a stuffed kitty in a present in a box, um, and I wanted it to be like a baby shower gift. So that's what we're making today. We're making a welcome baby, and that is um, I want to say something sentiments, scripted sentiments. It's Christina Werner's handwriting. Um, and it's a strip from um, Simmons to Stamp. So the plaid paper is Echo Park, one of their spring fling collections. And the blue polka dot is actually from Queen & Co. Um, when I showed that haul a couple of weeks ago. 
So I was picking out a color that I could use to add some dimension. You guys know that I enjoy doing this. I wish I would have left the white white, um, but you'll see me in just a second, you know, blend that out with a really light, light yellow green, but I really wish that I had left it white, but that's okay. I still think this card turned out really, really cute. So I'm going to cut this out and I'm going to cut away the tail from the pumpkin because the cat's supposed to be behind the pumpkin. And then I'm using my um, Stampin' Up marker to go around the outside. And you can do this with any kind of brush, brush tip that you have. So this is another thing I wish I'd done. I cut that to be more of a square. Then I cut it down in half to be more of a rectangle. And I kind of wish I'd left it a square. That's all right. No big deal. Or even made it like a like a gift bag with some tissue paper on the inside. I think that would have been really cute too. So I cut off the hands from the face so I could have it look like he's peeking out of this gift box. So I'm just adhering the hands with glue dots. And then I'm gonna add glue dots to the front of the face so I can glue it to the back of this box. And then I'm going to do the same thing for that swishy little tail. And I decided to have it so the tail kind of comes over the box too. So here, I thought I wanted something fancy to be like a ribbon on the box. And I really wish I had some ribbon, but I don't have any. Um, so initially, I was looking for a glitter paper, but I didn't really have a color that I really wanted to do. So I just ended up cutting a really thin strip of white. I cut this down to one quarter inch. And I used my grid mat to cut it, I mean, to play, to glue it, and I still glued it, glued it crooked. It's just how I am. <laughs> so this is a piece of white that I've cut down to four by five and a quarter, and I'm using some sponge sugar just to add a little bit of color to the background. Um, I didn't want to put this cat on more pattern paper because we already have two. So I decided I just wanted to add a little bit of a background to this white um, image, I mean, white paper. And that's why I went ahead and went with the sponge sugar. This is the Distressed Oxide. And again, I'm just using the um, toothbrush, I think they're called toothbrush makeup brushes. So this is the stack of paper I had left over from the My Favorite Things kit. They had another one go live today. I didn't get it. I wasn't, I, I, it's adorable, but it's not something I was super ecstatic to get. So I'm skipping it, but I still have a ton of cardstock left from that kit. So this is a piece of that. So I want to use this welcome baby, but I'm not even going to try to screw around with cutting it out. So I'm using some Sizzix. This is just double-sided tape. It's just paper. It's just a, a big strip. So I put that behind my cardstock and then I'm going to run my sentiment through my Gemini. Now I ran this through three times. I probably didn't really need to do that, um, but I went ahead and did it thinking that it was necessary and it just, it really wasn't. And yes, my gym, that's where my Gemini sits. I have the Gemini Junior. I am selling the Gemini if you guys are interested. Um, can't ship it because it's too big. But um, if you're local to DFW, um, Rob can meet you somewhere or you can pick it up at my house. Just message me if you're interested. So initially I thought I wanted to put this on um, a color, but I decided to go with white. So I'm going to add the cute little kitty cat and present with dimensionals. And then you can see here that you can just pull this out and then it's already got adhesive on the back. I did have to bring in my pokey tool to poke out like the E's and a couple of the A's, but it just stuck right down. I have to fuss with glue or nothing. You guys know me. I'm messy with glue anyway. <laughs> so I'm going to cut off the tails and then I decided to bring in some dots. And what I wish I had done is I wish I had used my Nuvo drops. I cannot for the life of me remember to use those things and they're right in front of my face on my desk. So hopefully next time, these are from Echo Park, but hopefully next time I want to add some more embellishment. I'll either use sequins or I will use um, my Nuvo drops. I can't wait to bust into those Nuvo products that I got in that Tonic 33 craft kit. I mean, that is just 
amazing. So that finishes this card. And here is a look at all three. So thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what your favorite card was down below. I'm interested in hearing. And yeah, I will see you guys Friday for another card video. Bye for now.